Hello everyone, I'm Matt Talbot. I'm the developer of the Hunt California app for the iOS operating system, which includes the iPhone and the iPad, as well as the iPod Touch. The Hunt California app was developed uh, to give you a quick and easy way to access some of the regulations, seasons, bag limits, etc. for all things hunting in California. The app contains all of the information you need within it. You don't need an internet connection to access the vast majority of the information within the app. There are a few exceptions and I'll try to cover those. Uh, the purpose of this video is to give you a quick overview. I don't want to spend like a half an hour on this. I'm going to try to get it done quicker than that. Uh, but to give you an overview of how the app works and some of the features that are available. The first thing you'll see when you first open the app is a notification that Hunt California would like to send you push notifications. These are things that I'll send out when the Department of Fish and Wildlife issues some sort of um, announcement that might be useful to you out in the field within the next few days or maybe up to a week. Say a particular area is closed because of wildfire. Uh, you might want to know that if you're headed there. So I'll try to push those out uh, when I get them. So the first thing you do is click OK. This will give you the home screen where everything is. If you scroll down, it'll reveal the bighorn sheep, the Caltip banner, and the phone number for Caltip. If you touch that, it'll dial Caltip directly if you're on an iPhone. Then the version number down here, the latest version, this one's 2.4. Um, if you think you don't have the latest version, just go to the App Store or within iTunes and see if this matches the version that's available. This is a tabbed application, so the first thing you see down here is the Home tab, Maps, Licensing, Hunter Education, Services. For home, all you have to do is touch this once, sometimes twice, to get back here to this home screen. No matter where you are, if you're here, if you touch this, you'll come back. If you're within some other area and you touch it once, sometimes, well, sometimes it may take two clicks to get back to this screen, but uh, touching home should get you back here. For the Maps tab, it shows you all of the map areas. We'll go to Deer Zones quickly. It'll ask you for access. Um, to your location while using the app. I'm not collecting any information on where you are, neither is Apple. This is just to show you a blinking blue dot of where you are while you're using the app. That's all it's for. We'll say allow. I'm using an iMac computer, so the blue dot right here is showing the Apple Store in San Francisco. That's the default location for the simulator that I'm using. If you were using this out in the field, it would actually show a blue dot where you physically are in the state as well as if you look up here there's a banner it'll give you your latitude and longitude. If you zoom in on one of these you can see that each one of these represents a zone, a deer zone. We'll go to this one here. This is zone D3. Anything within this blue line is D3. If you were within these blue lines, your blinking blue dot would be wherever you are. And that would help you keep from crossing over, say, into another zone by accident. You don't want to get caught out of your area. If you want more information, click the I. It'll bring up zone D3. It'll give you the season dates, general archery, and any additional hunts, G3, etc. If you click those, if you go home from there and click the D and go to additional hunts, and then you can see the other ones that are listed there. Here's G, uh, it's just scrolling like crazy on me now. Let's go to G3. Then you'll see another map, the season date, and then it'll give you estimated hunter success. It'll give you the harvest statistics, and then it'll give you the drawing statistics. Um, if you think you can draw a G3 tag, good luck to you. Here's your odds here. It just shows a three-year trend. It doesn't show your exact odds because it doesn't know how many preference points you have, etc. And it's going to be different from every year. And one of the reasons I don't put in an odds calculator is if you put in your preference points now, it would show you your odds for last year. You don't want your odds for last year. You want it for next year. And without knowing how many applications are put in for next year, you have no way of knowing. So it's not really an accurate way of doing things, at least in my opinion. So if you uh, look at the map up here, if you want to get a closer look, you can click on that and you can zoom it out, pan it around to get a better look at it. Click back, takes you right back there. Home takes you back to the home screen. So we were on maps and we kind of went down this road where you click I, 
zone D3, and then it goes through these additional hunts and whatnot. You can click that to return to the map. You can pan around and get different things. You can go to a satellite view. You can go to a hybrid view. So it shows the roads and, and names on top of the satellite map. Uh, I'll go back to standard just to make it a little quick. This is this works for any of these maps. So elk zones are the same way. You see one of these elk, click on it, it'll tell you Marva Mountains. Again, your specific location will show up here right now. It's just showing the app store down in San Francisco. Click the I. This is Marble Mountains area. The seasons vary by hunt, but it'll give you 301, 302, 303, and 408. So if you go back here, click the elk, go to elk hunts. Here's 303. Here's the Marble Mountains. One, two, three. Click on one of those. It's just like the deer. You get the map, you get the season dates, the tag availability, the hunter success rate, and then your drawing statistics. And again, a three-year trend. If I did any more than that, it would be way too cluttered on these small screens. So I stick to three years. Now, I've had some feedback on these. The computer does it numerically. That's why they're showing up that way. But I've had some feedback that say, maybe you should do it by area, have all Marble Mountain show up first in Northeastern California. That way they're all lumped together. Or you could do it like the Fish and Game does, all Roosevelt elk, all Thule elk, all Rocky Mountain elk. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure where I'm going to go with that. I may do it by area, by zone. Uh, and then the next thing you'll see are the numbers. Uh, but I'm looking into that for the next release, maybe for next year. On all of these big game, deer, elk, bear, pronghorn, and bighorn sheep, they all pretty much have the same options here. Big game drawing, regulations, guides, outfitters, and harvest reporting. So they're all going to lead you to the same thing for information on the big game drawing. The big game regulations, these are not all the regulations. They're just selected regulations you might find useful in the field. Uh, guides and outfitters, there's a database. So anybody that um, has indicated they're a guide for elk, in this case, will show up here. If you click on one of them, it'll give you their information. It'll show you what county they're located in, if they have a website or an email. Um, you touch their number on an iPhone and it will call them. You can ask them you know, what zones they actually operate in. All of that also can be accessed here in services. Here's your guides and outfitters. This goes by county. So if you want a guide in, uh, let's say, in Mariposa County, you can click there. Oh, no results in Mariposa. So let's go to Mendocino. And you can take your pick. Here's one here, all this relevant information. Uh, they may guide in other areas outside the county that they're in, but uh, something you need to call them and ask them. So that's in the services tab. That's your guides and outfitters. And then taxidermists. If you need a taxidermist and you're down in Kern County, you can click on that. And there's a couple of them there. Here's all their contact information. If you know a taxidermist or guide outfitter that needs to be listed in here and they're not, just shoot me a line admin at huntcalifornia.us. So we'll go back to our home screen. All of the big games are the same. Uh, the waterfowl, just slightly different. It's, it does have the waterfowl zones. And it'll give you the season dates and bag limits for ducks, geese, youth waterfowl hunting, and falconry. It'll do that for each one of these zones. There's your waterfowl definitions in case you're wondering special management areas, the department lands, these are for uh, reservations. Uh, it won't allow you to apply for reservation, but if you get one, it'll tell you for these specific areas um, the rules for how many people per reservation, when the check station opens, when the reservation expires, and if there's a refill procedure. Those normally don't change. I, I try to keep up on them. Department lands, public use information, Remember, department lands right now, all uh, CDF and ecological reserves and whatnot all require non-lead ammo at the present time. Has your shooting timetables. <clears throat> you haven't updated them yet for this year, but I'll uh, put those up there as soon as they do. Small game. You have your fur-bearing fur mammals. Bobcat has its own section. Non-game animals such as squirrels, rabbits, hares, crows. Uh, those things are all in there. Resident small game is defined. 
pronghorn. Again, all the same thing. Gives you your pronghorn hunts, and they're listed by number. Go down. It's all the same thing. The map, the, the season dates, the tag availability, hunter success, and your drawing odds. And then after that, it's the same as the other ones. Big game drawing, regulations, guides, outfitters, and harvest reporting. Uh, the harvest reporting right now is uh, everybody has to report the use of their tag, whether they used it or not. And especially uh, when it comes to deer, you're required now to report whether you used it or not. And if you don't do that, then next year, before you can buy your first deer tag application, they're going to charge you a $20 fee. If you don't pay that, you don't get a deer tag. The link, when you touch this link, will take you directly to the online sales where you can report your harvest or your tag use or non-use, as the case may be. There's also a link down here, a tab for licensing. This will just give you your frequently asked questions. Who needs a hunting license? How long is the hunting license valid? All those questions you have are going to be answered there without jumping on the Internet. The fees, they're pretty wishy-washy about these hit and miss. They, um, they update them. They change them. They update some of them and not others. I try to keep on top of them. This just kind of helps you plan. If you got a family you have to buy things for uh, or you know, helping out your friends or whatever, that information is there. Online license sales, this Hunt California app is neither affiliated with nor endorsed by the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. So nothing can be done within the app. If you click on this link here or touch that on the iPad or iPhone, it will open up the Safari browser and take you to the online license sales screen where you can uh, purchase any license tags, etc. Okay, and then it just tells you the what a resident is and etc. And then finally, there's a hunter education tab. Uh, give you a class schedule. The Ten Commandments of Firearm Safety. Always good to have, especially when you have kids around. Frequently asked question: Who needs hunter education? Um, how do I replace a lost certificate? This is very common. And then finally, the class schedule. This uh, requires internet access. It'll go out on the net and it'll bring up the register.ed website where you can enroll for a traditional hunter education class, which is about 12 hours, usually the course of about three nights uh, or maybe two days. It may involve live shooting, maybe not, depending on where you go. Uh, it's a good one for kids. Uh, if you do the online course, you can study at home, and then you need to do a four-hour follow-up class. You can view upcoming events. If you've already finished the online, you can come up on here, put in your zip code, find something near you. Here's one September 3rd. It's in Ukiah Gun Club. It tells you the hours. It's 8 to noon. There's still 14 seats. You can click on it and register for that class directly. And uh, that's something new, the online registration for 2016. And I think it's pretty cool, actually. So there you go. There's home, maps, licensing, hunter education services. Just a quick way to navigate around through the, the different um, types of things that you are going to find in the app and how they work, the features that are there. If you like the app, please go on to iTunes or the App Store and give it a good review. If you don't like it, please let me know ahead of time. Um, give me an opportunity to make it better before you make it stink on the Internet. Um, I would appreciate that. I hope you enjoy the use of this app. And again, if you have any suggestions to make it better, please let me know. The email address is admin at huntcalifornia.us. Now you can go to the huntcalifornia.us website. There's a link that will take you directly to the app store to download it. There's also some other information, screenshots, etc. cetera. Uh, please spread the word around. And uh, I hope you get a lot of good use out of this app. And I hope to keep it going for um, many years. So thanks for your time and uh, good luck out there in the field. I hope to see you on the trail.